Roger Palmer. Firm favourite here at Athletic. Corner comes in from Holden. Palmer's touch. Oh, off the line. It's there. Barrett. Palmer again. Got the decisive touch. Roger Palmer. Let's see what Curry can do now. Warhurst cross. Oh, that was a teaser. Palmer. Penny off the line. Left body cross this time. Palmer's header. 3-1. Roger Palmer. The substitute. Does it again. Chance now for Palmer to make it four. Which he does. Roger Palmer. 4-1. His second goal of the game. Every player inside the Albion half. It's balling for Adams. He can wrap it up here. It's on. Palmer, Roger Palmer seals it for Oldham, what a finish. Who Roger Palmer. Roger has probably been the outstanding servant in Oldham's recent history, I would think, uh, to finish top, top of the goal scoring chart season after season as he has done. And sometimes in different teams uh, speaks testimony for him and uh, I can't praise Roger high enough. What are his strengths? His strengths are that when he's in the goal area, he's no fear whatsoever of missing the target. And that's why no matter how badly he's playing, uh, no, ma no matter how tired he is, if you want anyone with the ball at their feet in front of the opposition's goal, Roger's the man. Well, uh, what's it like playing up front with Roger Palmer? Well, it's... Uh... It's always a pleasure to play up front with Roger. He does a, a lot of work that people don't uh, probably uh, give him credit for. And uh, it makes my uh, job a lot easier. Um, it takes a lot of pressure off me. And he also holds the ball up well. Does he get the credit he deserves? Um, I think he does with the fans. Uh, I think maybe sometimes uh, uh, the general public may not give him as much credit as, uh, as he does deserve. Why is that? Because uh, he's such a quiet person away from the pitch, you think? I believe that, yeah. Um, he's also, uh, he's, he's quite, really quiet on the, on the, on the football pitch. He, you know, he, he seems to, to ghost in it and, you know, do his, his, uh, his work very, sort of, casually. And, you know, it, it's one of those things that uh, people maybe think, well, he's not been in the game, but he's always working. Richie finds Holden. Holden breaking down this near side. Puts inside. Now Richie. Ball in towards Milligan. Now Palmer in space. Surely. It's there. Roger Palmer it is, who hands Athletic a lifeline. Nardilis, <laughs> only succeeds in getting that ball out to Rick Holden. Referee waves play on. Bones header, Palmer, it's there! Oh yes! You're calling the ghost, don't you? How did that yeah. come about? Um, it's, it's been it's been with him for a while. That I mean, it was the manager I think that first gave him that. It's just that he seems to be in the the, the right place at the right time, and he seems to pop up in areas where you don't expect him, and he's always on the end of crosses, uh, you know, and he seems to appear from thin air. It's like a latter-day Martin Peters, isn't it? Always on that far post. Yes, uh, it's uh, you know, people say, well, you won't see Roger score many goals from outside the box. And uh, I think that's true, he does get in and he's, he's, he's there with the little bits and scraps that come off the keeper and anything that's bobbling about. Is it, is it good to have Roger Palmer in the side? Yeah, obviously, um, he's a natural goal scorer, so when he plays, you always feel like, you know, Roger's going to score a goal. He seems to pop up in situations where nobody else would be, you know. They call him the ghost, is that, is that the way he plays? Yeah, he's, I think he's lost that bit, a bit of a ghost touch now, he's, he's getting too old now. Um, but when I first came to the club, you know, Roger was still quite young. And you used to suddenly appear from behind the fullback. You know, and the fullback would be looking around saying, Where's he gone? And Roger would be popping up, ball being back at night, and he'd be, you know, kick off again. Does he get any stick about his age? He's 32 now, isn't he? I don't think anybody really 
does know how old Roger is, to be honest. He's like these boxes, you know, I think he's about 55, really. He just cracks on, he's dirty. <laughs> Milligan, Palmer, well laid off to Bunt, Bunt showed too much of it to Hogg, but Henry takes over, chance for two, Palmer, it's there, Roger Palmer! Uh, how good a player is Roger Palmer? Oh, he's a great player, either, you know, coming off the bench or if he's in the team from the start, you know, you know that he's going to get a goal. Does he ever moan the fact he's uh, left out occasionally, he's put on the bench? No, that's, that's one thing, Roger, you know, you never hear him moaning about anything. You know, he's always, he's just, you know, in the team or out of the team, he, he'll, he'll just be there for you, know, when you need to go. Do you think that when Oldham are struggling, perhaps, which they haven't been too much this season, people look to Roger and think, you know, maybe he's, gonna, he's the one that's going to come up with something for us? Well, as I said, you know, he's, he's a guy who can just come off the bench and, um, and just change, you know, just change the game completely. He'll come off the bench and uh, anything over the top, he's onto it like a flash. Ten years or more, how many years have you been here, first of all? I've been here ten years at the moment. This, this season coming up, the tenth year. What, we look round the ground here, what, what changes, or are there many changes? What's different now? Obviously, the pitch is, for one thing. Uh, the pitch is different, but um, the crowd over the last couple of years, when I first come, was getting 2,000, 3,000. So at the moment, we're getting 12,000 each week, home games. And they still love you? Yeah, well putting the ball in it at the moment. What does it mean to you when they, they come out with a chant, the you Roger Palmer chant? Oh, it means a lot, especially when I'm scoring, but I don't know where it's come from. I don't know where it started from, but, but it makes me feel really good, yeah. How many years ago, can you remember when? How did it all come about? That's what I said, just, um, I don't really know. Oh, a couple of last couple of years I've been scoring goals and all of a sudden it's ooh, and, and it's just carried on from there. Adams cuts inside and looks for Holden, the ball may be too long, it is. Batty makes a covering tackle. Barlow, looks up, plays the ball in, good ball to Palmer with a header, a goal! Roger Palmer for Athletic! Well, that was a goal out of nothing. Andy Barlow cut inside, looked up, played a right-footed cross. It was a good cross too, and Palmer, completely unmarked on the penalty spot, gave Day no chance. <laughs> Promising position this for Athletic. Irwin. And Adams over the ball. It's going to be Irwin. Blast that one straight into the wall. Adams, second chance for Irwin. Cross comes in, Adams turns, Palmer's touch, it's there! Roger Palmer breaks the deadlock. He's got a special, uh, the, the, the crowd love him, don't they, basically? He's a, he's a real sort of special hero here, isn't he? Yeah, he's bound to be. I mean, he's been here ten years now. You know, he's been a great servant for the club. He come uh, from Manchester City relatively cheap and he's rewarded the club with over 150 goals, so... You, you can't complain, really. What's he like in the dressing room? Does he ever say anything? Does he ever chat? Or is he one of the quiet types? You won't even know he's in the dressing room. You've got to, you know, you've got to look around and sometimes I look at Earl and I think, oh, there's Roger. And you, look, you have to look twice, like, neither of them speak, like, but Roger, I think Roger's the quietest of the pair. Have you ever had a row with him? Roger, uh, affectionately known as my different coloured son. Never. Does he have a chat in team? Does, does he chip in, throw in his ten pen? Or do you, do you just sort of get I on with it on I the I don't pace? think he says ten words a season. Um, but you know this, that he does all the talking with his feet in the opposition's goal area. What about, do you ever see him uh, away from the pitch, away from the game? Not at all. Does um, anybody know anything about him? I don't think anybody knows anything about Roger. Uh, this, uh, this year, I think the club got hold of his, his telephone number and he's ruined it, you know, with it being his testimonial year. Uh, so he can't, he can't even hide away from that now. He's a shy person, is he? Um, I don't know. He's not, he's not really shy. I think he's just, uh, he keeps himself to himself and not uh, many people know what he does away from the ground. Rick Holden with a corner kick now for Oldham, who lead by two goals to nil. Away by Alvin Martin. Having a fairly torrid time of it. Holden, the deeper cross. Palmer is in there, so to Earl Barrett, and that's three for Oldham Athletic. 
Earl Barrett comes through from the back and scores his second goal of the season. And West Ham United, with three big men at the back, were beaten hands down in the air. The touch on by Palmer, and Barrett hooks it home. And look at Phil Park's accusing face. The deeper cross by Holden. Roger Palmer does well in the air, but he shouldn't have been allowed to win it. Dix with the throw in then for West Ham United. 21 year old Bristol lad. Inside by Adams. And again, the good flick on has Richie into the box. Palmer's there. And so too, Phil Parks. But it was a good flick on by Ian Marshall once more that set up that move. And Palmer nearly finished it. But you get the feeling that Oldham were just beginning to coast a little bit. And that may well act as a spur for them. Tony Gale chasing and concedes the corner. Very happy about it. Now, Will Oldham pick themselves up. They have had a scare. Will they respond? Holden's corner kick. Rick Holden. Flicked on the near post by Marshall. It's in again. And that's five for Oldham. And just what they needed. It did act as a kick up the backside. And Roger Palmer finally gets the goal he's deserved as well for a persistent night's work. Goal flashes for the fifth time tonight on that electronic scoreboard. And Roger Palmer nets his ninth of the season. There he is, but watch the run here at the near post. A flick on by Marshall, and Palmer gets in just in front of Alvin Martin, who it must be said was dawdling. Palmer gets the faintest of touches. The game has been played in splendid spirit as well. A couple of bookings for ill-timed tackles born out of frustration. Henry, Henry for Oldham, oh he was tripped, Nicky Henry to the dead ball line, can this be seven? Oh and Parks has saved it but was it over the line? And for the second time tonight, West Ham are rescued by their giant keeper Phil Parks and Roger Palmer denied. Nicky Henry, what a cracking run through though. He was tripped here by George Paris, he keeps his feet, just holds on, holds on, holds on, looks up and Phil Parks somehow keeps it out. Neville Southall has really kept Everton in this game. Two excellent saves. Bravery rather than uh, spectacular saves from Neville Southall. Good saves nonetheless. McCall's mistake. Picked up by Henry and now Holden. Early ball in. Palmer! It's there! Palmer has equalised! Roger Palmer! Makes it 2-2. Two -two. Roger Palmer, who is 10th goal of the season, makes it athletic 2 now. Everton 2. Well cleared by Stockwell. Headed back in by Irwin. And cleared again by Linigan. Cheers for giving on me, but it's too long. No chance for Palmer. It's three. It's a uh, Roger Palmer. And again, it must be said, a goal out of nothing. It's which caught very, very square at the back from that long ball forward. Forrest came hurrying off his line, and Palmer saw that. Oh, what a finish, though. You've played against him in training and, and what have you. What is it about him? What, what's his special He's ability? He just runs out of your eye line, you know, like if you mark him in train, he just runs out of your eye line, so you never know where he is at the time, and he's always, you know, he's always moving, so you can't, you can't pinpoint him, you know, you can't, you know, stay with him, so, and if you leave him for a split second, you know, the ball's in the back of the net.
What's the best goal you've seen him score? Um, I think it was a few years ago at City. Uh, I think it was a volley. Um, yeah, it was a volley, like, and he just, you know, he just, like, you don't score a lot of volleys or a lot of uh, goals from way out, and he just, you know, he just lashed it and he just went straight into the back of the net. His, his real sort of forte is the one on the far post, isn't it? Sneaking in behind. They must be sick well, of him, defenders. Yeah, well, I mean, as I said, like, defenders don't know where he is, you know, he, he, he just runs behind him. He never. You never see him running in front, you know, he's always running behind him and uh, that's how he gets all his goals. He, defenders seem to lose him in the box. No, he loses them. It's slightly different. Really? Um, because he's never still. And as I say, it's all instinct with Roger. You know, I, I think at times that he's not a particularly great striker of the ball unless he's in the box. He can't really head a ball unless he's in the box. But if there's a chance of a goal, R Roger's as good a finisher as I've seen. What about the players you play around? I mean, have you seen them develop players like Rick Holden, players like obviously Andy Ritchie's a star? Is he one of the best you've played with? Yeah, for, um, I always get on, I've got a good relationship with Andy. Every time I've played up front with him, it's gone well between us. Why is that? Is it, is it because you're sort of making the runs for him or are you doing all his work for him or what? Uh, I don't know, I don't know. It's just, it's just a good partnership, really. We just sort of work off each other. What about Rick Holden's crosses? How much does that help you? Are you always looking to get onto the back post? Um, Rick, um, Rick puts his crossing quite early. So for me, I like to get, you know, dart for the near post. And like Ian Marshall, if he's there, or Andy Richie go to the far post. I like to get to the near post, and if it's a bad cross from Rick, then just put it in the net. Palmer. Again, the throw into Athletic. Jurel side looking for this third goal, which would surely signal the end for Bournemouth. They look down and out already. Well, stranger things have happened in football as Barrett comes forward. Oh, what a ball forward. Palmer. Oh, I say. What a super, super goal. That was a delight to watch. And from the moment that Earl Barrett picked that ball up on the halfway line, he saw what was on, he picked out Roger Palmer with a brilliant through ball, and what finishing by Palmer. Holden, chance for four now. Oh, good save by Payton. Well, when the ball lands at Rick Holden's feet in that situation, you've got to fancy him for getting a goal. It was denied that time by Jerry Payton, who's got to be Bournemouth's man of the match tonight. Maybe... Holden can get revenge now and certainly get a cross in. Here it comes. Palmer's header, 4 0. Well, that was brilliant. Simple, yet so, so effective. Roger Palmer, his second goal of the night in the final minute, makes it athletic 4. Nil, but is there a memory that you look back on anything at all that you think that is the greatest moment I've had at Oldham over the years? Um, yes, uh, playing at Wembley. I know I only got 25 minutes, but that's one of the highlights. What about the, the reception you got the team when they came back to Oldham? That must have been magnificent. Oh yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't know there were so many people in Oldham at one time. Right? It was a shame in a way you were substitute for the for the League Cup final, ha Littlewoods Cup final. How big a disappointment was that? Um, it hurt me a little bit because um, I've never been to Wembley, played at Wembley before. I've been a ball boy before, but um, it was a bit disappointing. But when the crowd got behind me and shouting, who Roger Palmer, it sort of left me a bit. Roger Palmer, 10 years at the club, and as a record goal scorer in the club's history. Are they making a substitution? Well, indeed, they're taking Frankie Bunn off, and Roger Palmer, indeed, is coming on. I think it was inevitable. I just can't figure, really, why it took so long. No disrespect to dear old Frank, but he has had a, a pretty tough time of things out there. Adams, foul by Clough. Free kick to Oldham. Oh, 
20 minutes of the game left. Forest still leading by a goal to nil. Paul Warhurst with the free kick towards Andy Ritchie. Flicked on by him towards Palmer. Oh, my goodness. How did that stay out? Palmer got a touch. Sutton's arms were flailing. I'm not sure whether he got a touch or not. And Adams, who was coming in at the far post, just failed to get what would have been the simplest of tap-ins. There was a moment just in the second half there where you had a header which could have made it 1-1, which Steve Sutton just flicked away. What do you remember about that? Um, the header, I think, I think it was a corner, I think, and it come over. I remember going with the centre-half, and it was just a back header. And I was on the floor at the time. I thought it was going into the far corner. It looked as if, for all intents and purposes, it looked as if it was going in. Did you feel it was it was there? Yeah, I thought it was there, and I think Ado was coming at the far post, and I thought he could have got a touch on it. But that's the way it went. What about afterwards, the, the the scenes? It was very emotional, wasn't it, running around the ground? Yeah, it was uh, brilliant, because, like I said before, I've never, never been to Wembley before, and it's a beautiful stadium. Kick forward this time from Hesford. Falls for Marshall. Tried to turn Shotton. Shotton played the ball forward. Referee waves play on and Palmer makes it 1 0. Well, there's some controversy there because the linesman had his flag raised on the far side, but the ball did get played backwards from the whole city centre half. Here's Irwin. Searching ball forward. Good run for Holden. Oh, good save. Holden saw the chance, made a good diagonal run across the whole penalty box. Had to hit it first time, but a good save with his right foot by Hesford. Good reaction save. Maybe Holden could have connected better. And a good save nonetheless. Corner kick to Athletic. Redfern to take it. Swung in again to the near post. Palmer's flick. What a goal! Oh, a real beauty. Oh, a delightful goal. Well, sustained athletic pressure makes it 2 0. Barlow hit long towards Molden. Oh, a lovely layoff. Palmer. 3 0. Roger Palmer. He's a bit like a Martin Peters kind of figure, isn't he? On the far post, he's developed a sort of ghost reputation. He, he just, uh, he plays by instinct, Roger. You know, I, I don't think that it's any great product of coaching that Roger just goes where he thinks there's danger. And uh, I don't think he thinks about it. He just does it instinctively. And, and we know that if a ball's flashing across the box, Roger will be in there. If the goalkeeper palms it out, Roger's in there. And uh, he just loves scoring goals. You know, we laugh in the box that Roger, he doesn't show many expressions. But we know that as soon as he scored, we're going to see the teeth. Why do they call you the ghost? Um, I think the ghost started about two or three seasons ago. I used to play right side midfield. And um, when um, someone was crossing it from the left, everyone got dragged across. And I just come on the far post and it was a tapping. Because all the defenders went early on. And I just sort of stayed out and just tapped it in. It was a goal. Is that your favourite position, right side of midfield? Uh, that's where I've scored most of the goals from over the last couple of years, yeah. Is that, uh, it's sort of like the Martin Peters, isn't it? That's what he used to do, slide, slide in. Yeah. Um, and that's where it's like, worked magic for me, like, over the last couple of seasons, because everyone was watching, like, Andy Ritchie and that, you know, just leaving me out of it, but I was getting my fair share of goals from my... Tell me, when you were young, did you ever model yourself on a particular player? Was anybody uh, you, you, you particularly liked? Uh, no, not really. Um, it's just like over the last couple of years, everyone said to you, Martin Peters used to do that, and that's what, you know, that's modern on a little bit, yeah. It's a corner. Athletic will want to end the half with a flourish. You've got five minutes to do, do so, plus a fair bit of injury time, too. Cross comes in, Rich is there. Donick is header. Palmer, it's that. Roger Palmer makes it 1 0.
What about this season? People say, OK, you're, you're heading for promotion, but maybe you're not playing as well, not you personally, but as the team. What's your view? Uh, that's, a, that's been a talk around Oldham, really, to say we're not entertaining enough this year. But we're getting the three points and we're getting to the first division. Tell me about the goals you've scored. Which one particularly has, uh, has pleased you most? Um, there's one this season, early on this season, Middlesbrough away. Um, end up scoring on the left foot. That's the left foot's we're standing on at the moment. It's uh, went in the top corner. Left foot volley, was it? Left foot volley, what I remember of it. Um, Rick Oldham crossed it for, across field, chested it in, and just shut my eyes and hit it with my left foot. He says his favourite goal this season is the one at Middlesbrough, a left foot volley. Well, it, it probably is because he doesn't score many goals with his left foot, so uh, I'm not surprised it is, really. Well, Middlesbrough may not have had to withstand too many chances, but Oldham, in terms of possession, well on top at the moment. And what can the home side do to change that? Nothing. Again, Oldham quickly in with the covering challenges. Working hard. And squeezing the life out of the home side. Very professional, this. Barrett takes it down. Oh, Palmer it was rather than Palmer. Magnificent goal for Oldham Athletic. Roger Palmer's first of the season, and it looked so easy. Roger Palmer on 56 minutes. And what a splendid strike. Andy Ritchie Jura says you can't score from outside the area. Is that true? Well, I showed him this season against uh, Middlesbrough. So they don't say that anymore now. <laughs> <laughs> what goes through your mind? You know, you see a chance at goal. Is it is it instinctive, or are you thinking, I'll put it here, or, or what? Um, I've always been like good at one to one with the keeper, and I just I make up my mind straight away. I just I let the keeper make the first move and just slot it either side of him. But it, people talk about great goal scorers, and they say, is it instinctive? Is it something you're born with, or is it something you practice? Uh, uh, sometimes it's just in you. you. You can either score or you can't score. Because we rib uh, Nicky Henry, like, he's, he just struggles, you know, when he shoots that goal. So we said, we'd say, cross it, Nick, you know, and it could be a goal for me. <laughs> You've kept him on the bench uh, a couple of times this season. Is that because of his age? Is he getting on a bit, do you feel? Um, at 32, he's only quick now, where I think a couple of years ago he was turbocharged. But also, you know, sometimes you have to nurse uh, senior players, not older players, through. And um, Roger's still a very, very, very big part to play at Oldham Athletic. They keep going on about your age, 32. How are you feeling? Are you keeping up with the pace these days? Uh, I'm quicker than Molson. Really? Yeah. <laughs> what about the players? Do they give you stick about it? Um, yeah, they give me a little bit of stick. They say, oh, there he is going in again for resting time again. Do like Willie Donnicky usually just says, you, you go in, Roger, and I'm like, so oh, there he goes. What well, a training, they say you can go off early, do they? Yeah, they just say, you need a bit of a rest now. Do you feel you need a rest? Yeah, no, I feel fitter than myself. What about this substitutes tag? Does it frustrate you being on the bench? Uh, yeah, it does a little bit. But, you know, Gaffer picks a team, and that's, you know, you've got to accept things like that at times. Free kick forwards. Barlow won the header, as did Holden. No Henry. Denied by Downing. Good challenge. Cook forward. Bulls made the run. More chance now. Good defending again by Jobson. For a second then, I thought he'd lost it. Here's Barrett. Well, will Joe Royal's policy of only playing three men at the back eventually pay off? It is doing so far. Oldham lead 2-1, Redfern, wide for Barrett, left footy cross this time, Palmer's header, 3-1, cracker, Roger Palmer, the substitute, does it again, and that was a classic. Cross in by Earl Barrett from the, the right hand side, left footed cross. Um, Roger Palmer, typical goal from him, rolls majestically, and the header just glanced just wide. And Mike Stowell's outstretched right hand. 3 1 Oldham lead now. Dennison, I beg your pardon, it's Bellamy. Played wide for Steele. 
Dispossessed by Barlow. Hers after that one. Stancliffe gets across. All of them get a throw in. All action stuff from the home side now. Holden, left footed, but Palmer's header. Really ghosted in then, Roger Palmer. Dispossessed by Marshall, who's got through a tremendous amount of work, both in attack and defence for Oldham this afternoon. Henry's ball, cut out, ball, good layoff. Jobson again there for Oldham. Now three minutes to go. Chance now for Palmer to make it four, which he does. Roger Palmer, 4 1, his second goal of the game. Stowell, it must be said, was a few yards off his line then, and Palmer's shot just a chain too powerful for him to hold. But even though Stowell got a hand to it, it can end over him and into the back of the net. 4 1 to all them. One thing you can say about this game, it's certainly end-to-end -end stuff. No real chances at present, but play swinging from one, one end to the other in quick succession. Oldham's turn now with this corner. Taken by Holden. Marshall was almost on the end of it. Desperate clearance by Plymouth. Still, Oldham have possession with Henry. Marshall's head out. Palmer tries to get in. Gets a shot too. Well, he was turning one way and then the other then, Roger Palmer. He had to hit the shot, twisting and turning in mid -air. But he did get the shot in. But uh, being so much off balance, the ball sailed hopelessly over the bar. Must be remembered too that uh, Plymouth without regular defender Nicky Marker here's Earl Barrett for Oldham hits that one long again for Marshall who wins the header Palmer oh just over not a bad effort from Roger Palmer four goals this season very very close to number five Marshall won the header from Barrett's cross chested down by Palmer on the half volley just a yard or so over the Plymouth bar. Redfern scuttles away to take it. Near post ball. Marshall's flick. It's in. Palmer the scorer. Roger Palmer. 2 2. His fifth goal of the season. His third in two matches. Roger Palmer, the saviour, once more for all of them. Redfern's quickly taken corner kick, hit to the near post. Marshall got the vital touch, and Palmer, unmarked, almost on the goal line, just glanced off the top of his head, a little that Rhys Wilmot could do about it. Redfern hooks at one forward. Here's Warhurst. Trying to shake off Morgan. Donachie. Wide for Holden. Good ball by Donachie. Palmer's in there again. Well, he crept in between two defenders then, Roger Palmer. Really forced his way through. Got a right boot to it. Got the ball straight into the arms of Reese Wilmot. Brown forward. Cut out by Barlow. Donachie. Redfern. Good play. Warhurst. Suddenly space opens up for him. Warhurst shot. Palmer, 5-3. Well, will, ever, will Roger Palmer ever stop scoring goals? Through Roger Palmer, they all shout. 
But all the rows from Paul Warhurst down that right hand side. He cut inside the first defence, let fly with a rasping right foot drive that was too hot for Wilmot to hold. And when the ball rebounded out, who was there first? Palmer, 5 3. O'Neill runs away and he joins the rest of the Portsmouth defenders as Holden comes in. Gosney's punch and that's headed towards Gone. That's a, another one for Oldham. That's 2 1 to Oldham. Roger Palmer, the scorer. And again, question marks have to be aimed at the Portsmouth defence. Gosney came for the ball, only succeeded in punching it clear. And there was Palmer with a long, deep header. Tell me, first of all, how much did it mean to you to break the record and become Oldham's leading goal scorer? Uh, it was brilliant. Um, it took me really a while. I remember Gordon, who, who works at Oldham, coming to the dressing room and said, oh, you're not far off the record. And that was it. It took me ages to get it. Was it in your mind at all, that the, the record was in your mind, was it? It was just, it was in my mind, and I was missing so many easy chances that I normally took away with my eyes shut. Um, and that's the way it went. It took me about two months to score again. In a way, it's, it sort of happened with the 150th goal as well, didn't it? Yeah, that's gone through again. Did the same again, coming to the dressing room, and that was it. Been a nightmare since. <laughs> what did that mean to you, finally getting that 150th goal? Oh, it was great when it came, I think it was, um, Swindon away with the glancing header. Once again, getting off the bench. Is it difficult coming off the bench to do that? Uh, yeah, sometimes it's, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, you know, when you've been on the bench. Tell me about that goal at Swindon. What did the manager say afterwards? Uh, it, was, uh, it was a bit of a laugh in the dressing room afterwards. He just turned around and said, well, you know, there was Roger's eyes and his teeth again, uh, smiling after he'd uh, notched again. Not so long ago, not so long ago, a couple of weeks ago, it came up with about three goals in, in a couple of weeks. One cracker against Swindon, the glancing header, just when he needed it, wasn't it? Really, he, he always comes up with a goal. I mean, that's why he's probably an ideal sub now. You know, in a very similar um, way to the Wimbledon use Alan Cork. You know, coming on when when they need to either revive a game or liven things up. And uh, it, it doesn't matter where you're playing, whether we play him on the right, whether we play him through the centre of midfield, whether we play him up front. I'm sure that if you played him in goal, he'd still score a goal. There was a goal against Swindon too, the nice glancing header when he came on. That must have given you a lot of pleasure. Yeah, um, I don't really score many with my head anyway, but that's one of the goals at that night. How frustrating has it been with this injury, though? That must have, that must have knocked him back, obviously. Uh, yeah, it's knocked me back a bit, because um, I don't really get injured. It's like the first serious injury I've had in ten years since I've been here. What, what exactly is it, and how long are you going to be back, do you know? Uh, so, Done my knee ligaments. Um, to say, could be out to the end of the season. I don't know. Just see how it goes. It would be marvellous to think you could get back, wouldn't it, before the ish, dare we say it, promotion happens? Yeah, yeah. Because I've been I've been waiting for a long time, and it'd be sad to miss out. Really. It's great affection for him from the crowd as well, isn't it? Here, he's become a cult figure. When I first came here, uh, I think he'd had a bad season, and he wasn't particularly popular then. But uh, there's nothing makes you popular like scoring goals, and and, and he's done that consistently. Who, Roger Palmer? Roger Palm. Can he get the cross in? Yes, he does. Headed away by Shakespeare. Every player inside the Albion half. It's fallen for Adams. He can wrap it up here. It's earned. Palmer. Roger Palmer. 